Keta Lagoon in Ghana's Volta region is the largest lagoon of its kind in Ghana. But more importantly, it is a vital part of the lives of the communities located on its shores. This is certainly true for the people of Dogbekope, one of those communities. <laughs> AC has lived in Dogbekope her whole life. She earns her livelihood from the Keta or Amuga, as it is known locally, as well as from the surrounding lands. It has always been possible for her and members of her community to catch fish during the rainy season and mine salt during the dry. She recalls her grandmother telling her stories about how she would set traps for all kinds of fish in the lagoon, how her catch would either be fried or sold fresh to traders, who would in turn take them to the Agbozumen, Denu, or Lome markets. When salt was produced, it could be taken to markets as far away as Lagos. Today, all that appears to be under threat, as corporate interests supported by the might of the state have taken over the lagoon and its surroundings in the name of promoting foreign investment. Kersington was incorporated in March 2009 as a salt winning company. The, the Indian company, that is the Kensington um, Salt Industry. The area was given to them by the Minerals Commission in Accra to be used for salt mining. We have two concessions. It is, called, it, it is one concession, but they make it two. They call it Adina Concession. That ends at where we are approaching there. The second concession is Blekusu and Angavaji. Though it is one concession, but it is divided into two. That is how the, the government apportioned it. The concession ran between these communities, because the lagoon is between the communities. It is true that the entire area has been given to the Indians by the Minerals Commission. All the communities in this area were not mentioned in the concession. Kensington Industries Limited an Indian-owned salt multinational has been granted a concession, one of many, made up of part of the lagoon and its surrounding areas to undertake salt mining. This has been done for the most part to the detriment and exclusion of locals. In the first place, uh, the lagoon has been assumed to be the property of the chiefs there. The chiefs claim the property uh, the lagoon is their property and they, they can do use it the way they like. When they got, we got the license from Mineral Commission and we came to the site, we cannot go to each and every corner. What we did was we went to the Paramountcy, that is the Paramount Chief of the area, and he in turn invited the community chiefs, those who he felt are to be Invited. For AC, growing up in Dogbe Kope meant that she had learned from her mother the intricacies of lagoon fishing and salt mining. Like her, 
Women salt merchants have long been economic and social forces to reckon with in their communities, providing not only for their households and families, but also supporting the community at large. However, all this is threatened. One day, ACN members of her community woke up to the realization that they could practically be declared trespassers in the lagoon. Indeed, no one in the community had believed it was possible to dispossess them of what they considered to be their territory, without proper consultation and without their agreement. That it has happened has come as a great shock to the thousands of women and men affected. I am a member of the community of the a volia, me garage, a filler, December time, me garage, and a season for Miona. Cacac, but a coming no near me back, oh, you were a ploy for dollar or club, woe, one or dom, or chom me, you're a miapa assembly. Pascalante, bo. I love me now, never knew me back, go domi. Near Legi, obey a now who torn a sea, or you're not who top a yip yet over. Uh, Togbi Oni Alaba Mia Legia, Viva Dorege, Kaka Yuvia by Mashirago. Lucky Navajon Yama Tovua, Kumashirago, Aba Gomet Ajra Tovuane Alaba a Fiaho Dashiraji. When the investors came, they went to them and they, they bargained, they, they paid something, I don't know and then uh, the lagoon has become theirs. But since the industrialists have come, we've not had uh, our fishing, we've not had our salt gathering uh, uh, as we, we used to do. And so they are a big problem. Never in their lives did the community members imagine that the lot that had befallen the communities of Adar when they were dispossessed of the Adasonga lagoon for individual and foreign investors would befall them too. It is an example of how, yet again, government's policy on salt has made victims of a people who have been dependent on their natural resources. Questions might be asked. For instance, how does the lagoon, like Kita, a community heritage, suddenly become the property of one person or a foreign investor to the disadvantage of local people? How can the livelihoods of a whole community be taken away from them by the state without due regard for that survival, without due regard for their own economic, social and cultural rights? What about questions of compensation? Why hasn't there been at least a discussion of compensation? For the people of Dogbe Kope, matters came to a head on Wednesday, December 2nd, 2015, when locals were prevented from harvesting salt they had gathered over the last salt mining season because Kensington Industries was constructing a road across the salt pans to allow it easy access to its own salt pans. The result was a clash between locals and the police who were called in by Kensington to protect property from being vandalized. In the ensuing melee, an excavator and a truck belonging to Kensington were set ablaze Shots were fired, resulting in bullet wounds and arrests. On 2nd of December, we were at work. We saw some people coming towards where we are operating. The police were always around. So when the mob was, were coming, the police were pacifying them. Some of them went through the back of the police and set two of our machines on fire. Recently, uh, when salt was ready to be gathered, People made their own ponds, salt crystallized, I mean the water crystallized into salt and it, it was ready to be gathered. What did they see? They saw that the Kensington Industries Limited, all the, their workers, they came trying to build their dikes. They poured sand, earth, everything on the ponds and destroyed the salt. They were offended and therefore they protested. 
the protest resulted in the police and the army attacking them and one was beaten and brutalized to near death. Yesterday, there was a big fight, a big war. There was what you call a, a battle, a real battle. The soldiers had their guns, and the, the local people had their clubs and so on. And there was an exchange, a serious exchange, and uh, casualties resulted. Four of our people became wounded. They had just suffered gunshots and they were taken to hospital. On the 2nd of uh, December, there was an incident at uh, the salt mining uh, company at Edina. When the youth mobilized them to burn down the excavator and then a tipper truck that was stacked there. It was when I got their head that the division commander was head and two other policemen who were rushed to the hospital and brought back. In the process, the divisional commander's weapon was taken from him. And in fact, we, that was uh, something we could not sit down and look for. So we did all we can. And then uh, through information gathering, we were able to uh, nab the suspect. The tensions have since risen in the area. The youth of the Ketu South Municipality are victims of a competing struggle for economic development. The establishment of a salt mining company in the area four years ago brought us some relief as we thought that poverty would be reduced somehow. Contrarily, poverty is on the rise now. Our youth have to engage in salt mining to earn some money for Christmas. December is here again, and hopes have been dashed as the seasonal salt mining by poor locals has been halted. Workers of the salt mining company were ordered to construct a road where community folks were harvesting salt. This location is nowhere near the installations of the company. The poor man's salt harvested through manual toil was deliberately mixed with salt and this provoked a reaction by, the, by which the irate youth burned some vehicles of the company. This brought the police and military brutalizing and shooting our youth with live bullets. As we speak now, some are receiving treatment at the Abor Catholic Hospital. Some refer to Kolebu Teaching Hospital, while others are in police custody. While we deem it regrettable to have such a thing happen, we, the youth of Klikoi and Sume and the Ketu South at large, will want to point out that this development has been looming for some time and if not handled well, can escalate to uncontrollable levels. Because we will not sit down for the company to trample on the rights of innocent citizens fighting for their daily bread. It is incumbent on government to protect our rights as landowners from becoming landless or tenants on our own land. We strongly deem it unfair and unjust to have this company operate on the land that sustained our livelihoods for centuries without proper engagement of the youth and other relevant stakeholders. Critical issues regarding any alternative livelihood regime has been ignored for instance, the fields in question used to serve as salt harvesting fields during dry seasons and fishing during rainy seasons. What do we live on today if our main source of livelihood has been taken away? Instead of using seawater as is said to be agreed on, they pump underground water for their operations. This has resulted in rising salinity levels in underground water meant for irrigation. It is obvious that this company is more of a curse than a blessing to us. Much as we condemn every act of violence, including burning of vehicles belonging to the company, we also condemn every action or inaction of relevant stakeholders in the event of establishing the company without due recognition to the larger community. 
we are not against the operations of the company, but lack of transparency in all dealings regarding its establishment and operations. We, the youth of Kliko and Some traditional areas, want to know the following as a matter of urgency. One, how was the land acquired by the salt mining company? Two, we want the government to come clear with its own involvement in the sale or otherwise of the land to the company. Three, who were the key personalities involved in the release of land to the company? We want to see the documents relevant to the release of land, especially all terms of reference, including the local content provisions of alternative livelihood for the communities within the company's catchment area. As a matter of urgency, we also want the company to vacate the land immediately until all relevant issues regarding their operations in the community are well addressed. Since then, tensions have arisen in the area. Those arrested were detained, taken to court and released on bail, but their cases have not yet been resolved. There have also been complaints of harassment and intimidation, with the police being accused of conducting unannounced and illegal searches. The harsh reality is that the dispossession of the community is at the center of the crisis. Unfortunately, the protection of large-scale private property appears to be much more important to the state and state security agencies than the livelihoods of the thousands of artisanal small-scale salt miners whose lives have been affected by the arbitrary handover of the lagoon to this multinational salt company. The foreign investor, it appears, is much more important than the indigents of Ketu South, whose centuries-old inheritance appears to be in nothing. As has been the case in gold mining communities, the reality faced by communities of the deprivation and dispossession from the takeover of their lands by foreign investors is fast becoming the lot of artisanal small-scale salt mining communities. But for communities like Dobekope, the situation might be significantly worse. Why? Because whereas in gold mining communities compensation is paid for the loss of income earning property, this is not the case for SALT. Communities are unlikely to receive any compensation because areas such as the Keta Lagoon are considered to be public property. <laughs> The discontent expressed by members of the community may be just the tip of the iceberg. A look at the map shows the extent to which concessions have been granted in and around the Keta Lagoon. Taking lessons from the Kensington episode, it hints at the potential for conflict in a number of other areas where communities have not been acknowledged. Now for Essie and others like her, the earlier the situation is reversed and access to the lagoon given back to them, there seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel. But the fact is, if managed properly, both small and large-scale salt mining can take place on the lagoon. The lagoon can and must provide for all. They have to take the abuse and they of course the present state with ancient history. Use our goodness and nourishment in the name of missionary. Blind to us, blind us, they saved us, misplaced us, stranded us, sad and us, then they replaced us. Now we got to learn from pain.